So it turns out if you study great men in history, you can pick up on the values because you're basically there with them in reality. You're there with them concretely. So it's no good to tell a kid that you should be honest because it's bad not to be and tell them about Pinocchio and tell them that lies build up and all those things that are true. You know, it's true that a lie builds up and builds up until you, you have to cover it with ten other lies and then it's as plain as the nose on your face. That's all true. The kid's not going to get anywhere. He's not going to... He's going to think, well, if I can lie and get away with it, then I'm okay. That's what he's going to think. But if you study Newton, Isaac Newton, or Galileo, or Kepler, if you study these men and, and the moral attitude they had towards life, you can learn a lot from them. Now, if you want to know more about the great men in history and the great people in history that you can study for a moral introduction, for, for morality's sake, to learn values, Here's a good book, Six Great Scientists, by J.G. Crowther. He goes over Copernicus, Galileo, Newton, Darwin, uh, Marie Curie, and Einstein. He goes over the lives of each of them and shows that they had a moral integrity and that their discoveries, their whole success in their scientific discoveries, came from their moral qualities. Six Great Scientists, by J.G. Crowther. Good book right there. Anyways, to continue with Lisa Van Dam, there's just two more courses we've got here. Motivation in Education by Lisa Van Dam. Now here she talks about the fact that if a student's not motivated to learn, there's nothing you can do to get them to learn. Do you know sometimes when you're reading a book and all of a sudden you realize that for the last two or three paragraphs you've been going over the shopping list in your head and picking, you know, saying I need to pick them up from soccer tomorrow and you've got your things that you're thinking about what you need to do totally have any the words have been going through your mind in front of your eyes but you don't have any idea what's been said in the last two or three paragraphs so it is possible to read or hear something and have it go in one ear and out the other and the reason for that is because you're not motivated right if you're motivated on the story if you want to pay attention to the story if your mind is not preoccupied with other things, right? If you're willing and ready and want to put everything else out of your mind to pay attention and focus on it, then you can absorb every sentence and every paragraph. So if you're motivated, you can learn. Now, part of motivation comes from the learning method. Uh, and I don't mean like some people learn visually and some people learn audio audially. By learning method, I mean whether or not it's lectured properly, whether uh, they're just handed a book and given some stupid questions, or whether the, the teacher actually goes over the material and gets the students excited and involved in the important parts. So that's the difference. Motivation in education has to come from getting the kid excited about learning, not by games and stuff all the time, no, but by giving him information that he wants to have. Like the lives of Galileo and Newton. Those are great men and there's only a few hundred really great men in history to study. And they are fascinating men. They are fantastic lives. And the student will love to be introduced to them. So there's no getting around the fact students do love to learn and if you motivate them properly they will. And that's, that's her course here is motivation in education and how it's essential how you can't just tell them, look, this is going to be on the final. Yeah. That's no way to motivate. The material's got to be interesting, which means it has to be relevant, which means it has to be concrete, not abstract and floating. It has to be concretized, linkable to reality. Lastly, we have Objective versus Classical Education by Lisa Van Dam. So in this, in this course, Objective versus Classical Education, she goes over the movement that is um, present uh, in America now and over the last 20 or 30 years or so of saying we need to go back to the old way of educating. We need to teach them about the stuff that they were teaching them 100 years ago uh, because kids are stupid now and something's wrong. We've got to go back. So go back to a classical education. Reading, writing, arithmetic, uh, world literature, you know, all those things. 
and she goes over wh how that approach is inappropriate and incorrect and she goes over some of the violations of hierarchy that they do in their approach in classical education and she shows that you don't have to go backwards a hundred years you just have to be objective in education you can't cram the student full of values that the teacher believes in or that the school system believes in or that the state believes in you have to educate the child if you want him to be honest you can't just tell him you have to be honest you have to get him to understand why honesty is important and the same goes for any other value productivity or anything else so the uh, classical system of education it says go back a hundred years the objective system of education says link it to reality make it observable concrete and relevant to the child so it can be understood so Lisa Van Dam's courses on education uh, I recommend all of them available at the Ayn Rand bookstore.